welcome to another online Yoga for Mums class. Today we're talking about an area that we don't like to talk about very often, unless it's in a joking manner and maybe joking around with our girlfriends, but it is an area of the body that, after having children, needs our attention. Have you guessed what it is? It's the pelvic floor. So today I want, you to, I want to take you through a series of yoga poses where we bring awareness to this area. And the reason for that, I'm sure you know. <laughs> so if you've had a baby by natural birth, by cesarean, it doesn't matter. If you've carried a baby, that area is likely not what it used to be. So what we do in this practice is we really bring our awareness to the area. We focus on lifting and contracting those muscles with the breath. And then we basically move through our standard yoga poses and bring awareness to the area. So you may find already if you're practicing yoga that in some poses, especially the really open poses like uh, warrior two and things like that, that your awareness has to go to that area unless you have a little accident. So today I want to show you how to really um, lift and contract those muscles correctly so that you can work on rebuilding the strength so that you can have a long um, life enjoying a strong pelvic floor. So let's get going. Enjoy the class. Namaste. All right, so before we get started, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about the pelvic floor muscles, just so you have an understanding of where they sit. Obviously, you have some idea, <laughs> but just so you can really imagine what they look and feel like so that you know that you're activating the right area of the body. So if you think of the pelvic floor muscles, if you just take a seat down onto the bottom, you feel into those sit bones. So the pelvic floor muscles sit like a hammock between the sit bones, the pubic bone, and the tailbone. So rather than just thinking about them um, as the external muscles that we use um, to contract when we're going to the toilet, you can really think about those muscles sitting like a hammock that you want to lift up when you're doing these poses and throughout everyday life when you need. So I want you to think about how the pelvic floor and the diaphragm or the breathing works together. So as you inhale, the diaphragm presses down on the pelvic floor muscles and see if you can relax those muscles. And then as you exhale, the diaphragm releases back up. So you notice the belly goes in and out and the diaphragm presses down when you inhale. So when you exhale, it releases back up and I want you to lift up those muscles of the pelvic floor as you do so. So even just in a sitting position, you can practice that. So as you inhale, release the muscles. And as you exhale, so it lifts up. See if you can draw up. So it's as simple as that. We will go through some other exercises where we're using a couple of breaths for each contraction. So it's important to be able to hold through the breath as well. But just naturally, the pelvic floor should be working with that breath. All right, let's get going. So coming down onto a bolster or cushions or pillows or whatever you're using today, we're going to come into bound angle pose. So if you have a strap, you may like to place it around the back and then around the feet to keep them in close towards the groin. So I'm working without one today. So it's just bringing the feet together in towards the buttocks and then lying down, getting yourself comfortable. So often when we're doing pelvic floor work, we want this area to be nice and open. So it may be feeling a little bit uncomfortable for you, especially if you do have a weak pelvic floor at this stage. But it's getting used to being here and contracting those muscles that's going to get us stronger. So just in this position, so we're stretching into those muscles as well as bringing our awareness to them. I just want you to focus again on inhaling and releasing those muscles and then exhaling and lifting them up. So feel like that hammock is drawing up towards the body. Inhale and release. Exhale and contract. Inhale and release. Exhale and contract. So let's add a little bit of movement now. So as you inhale, 
draw the knees up together. So let the pelvic floor release. And then as you exhale, let them the knees fall to the side and see if you can contract the muscles. It's quite difficult because the action feels like it should be the opposite. So inhale the knees up. Exhale, open and contract. Inhale, release. Exhale, open and contract. Once more, inhale, release. Exhale, contract. So just let the knees fall to the side for a moment and really just relax into this area completely. Let your breathing return to normal. So it can feel a little bit like brain yoga at this stage. It's about getting that connection between body and mind happening. So during pregnancy, we can sort of release those muscles a little bit too much if we haven't been bringing our awareness there to start with. If you are pregnant and doing this video, good on you. You'll have less problems than many of us. So just give yourself a moment here just to breathe, just to relax through the hips. You might be feeling quite a stretch through that inner thigh. So just bring the awareness there and breathe into that space. And then as you inhale, draw the knees back in together and take the feet to the floor. We're just gonna lift up and off the cushion. So just move them to the side and come to lie all the way down onto the back. So for the next little bit, we're gonna work with a block. If you don't have a yoga block, you can um, get a thick sort of book or something this sort of shape. So even if it was like a plastic container or something, and we're just gonna place it in between the knees. So just walk the feet in so that you can almost, or can, touch the back of those heels. Let the shoulders release down into the floor. And then as you inhale, I just want you to squeeze the knees into that block so those inner thighs are contracting. And as you do so, lift up with the pelvic floor. And then completely release. So once more, squeezing the block with the knees. So you can always change how the block is sitting if that's not feeling good. Make it a little bit harder by turning the block on the side. And just working with contracting the inner thigh, lifting the pelvic floor up and also activating that core. So the core lifts in and up the body. And then release. And we're gonna to add to this. So rest the palms onto the floor and as you inhale, press into the feet to lift the hips. So moving up into a bridge. So really focusing on squeezing those knees in together, lifting the hammock, lifting the pelvic floor, and drawing that core in and up. So standing strongly into those feet, so you might also feel the muscles of the glutes and thighs working. And breathing. So here's an example of where we're breathing freely in and out, and the pelvic floor is working separately to the breath. If that feels good, you can come a little bit higher and interlace the fingers rolling up onto the tops of the arms, pressing into the floor further with the feet. Keep squeezing those knees together. So I know they are because the block's there. And keep lifting up with that pelvic floor. So any time that you need to come down, feel free to do so and hug those knees into the chest. And then slowly come down off the top of the arms, release the fingers and roll the vertebrae all the way back down. Release the block now. So just coming to our bridge without the block and using our own awareness to keep the inner thighs contracting. So as you inhale, keep the pelvic floor relaxed and roll up. And then as you exhale, contract and draw all the way back down, noticing how it's feeling different. So release, inhale, roll up. Exhale, contract and draw down. So this time we're gonna hold the contraction. So as you inhale, lift up, contract the pelvic floor, contract the core, draw those knees in. Keep contracting, exhale, lowering down. Coming up again, inhale. 
Keep the contraction of the pelvic floor, keep the core engaged. Exhale, almost done, keep holding and release the pelvic floor. So you might want to take the feet wide, maybe give the legs a little bit of a shake, really releasing through this area. You might want to draw the knees into the chest, maybe take a little rock from side to side. Whatever you need to do to really release through the pelvic floor. So sometimes when we're doing this sort of focus work on a particular area, we can start really gripping so you don't want to be gripping the external muscles. You really want to be lifting with that hammock. So try and keep the focus there. All right, so from here, we're going to come up into some stronger poses. So inhale, draw the knees into the chest. And start taking a few rocks, rolling up and back. So as you do so, engaging the core, engaging the pelvic floor. And then however you get there, rolling over the feet or bringing them to the side. Just coming into our cat cow. So take the hands under the shoulders, the knees under the hips. So as you inhale, contract, lift up. Exhale, look back towards the thighs. Keep the contraction. And then release back to tabletop and release those muscles. Inhale, contract. Exhale, keep the contraction. And release back to tabletop, releasing the core, releasing the pelvic floor. Once more, inhale, contract. Exhale, keep the contraction. And release to tabletop. All right, let's step the left leg forwards now. So coming into a runner's lunge. So you can take the back knee strong if you like or keep it gentle today. You can keep the hands on the floor lifting the chest or perhaps you can come up to the thigh, maybe even bringing the hands up tall, whatever feels good. So I'm just gonna work with the hands on the thigh today. So you've noticed again, creating a lot of opening in this area. So it lends itself to needing the pelvic floor to be working correctly. So you may find if you've been in a normal yoga class that in this position, you're already thinking, oh, I've really got to contract, I've got to hold on tight. You may get uncomfortable in this position if you um, have drunk a lot of water before class and need to go to the toilet. So this is why we come here and really bring our awareness to the breath. So inhaling and releasing. Exhaling and contracting. Inhaling, releasing. Exhaling and contracting. So keep the full belly breaths happening as you do this. And then take the hands down to the ground. Walk that front foot across. It might tuck into the groin or it might be able to stay close to this wrist. Stretch the back leg out. Inhale, so we're moving into our pigeon. If this is too much on your hips, that block or a cushion can come back under to support. So you can sit up on the block. If it's feeling good, stretch that back leg out. Inhale, rise through the chest and then exhale, maybe coming down to the forearms. Maybe you're sitting up on the palms, that's fine. Maybe you're still working with the block but under the hands instead. So again, a lot of opening through that area. Inhale and release. Exhale and contract. Inhale, release. Exhale, contract. Once more, inhale, release. Exhale, contract. As you inhale, bring the hands back to the floor. Get rid of the block if you were using it. Tuck the back toes. Press all the way back to your down dog. So pedaling up through those heels, lifting the hips high, drawing the heels down to the earth, drawing the elbows in, pressing the floor away strongly through those hands. And 
And as you inhale, we're going to take the knees down towards the floor and just hover them here. So keep pressing the floor strongly away. Keep drawing the shoulder blades back down the back and see if you can inhale and exhale here, really focusing on contracting the core, lifting it in and up and lifting the pelvic floor. Then exhale all the way back. Inhale, bringing the knees back down. So core is on, pelvic floor is on, lifting up, Mula Bandha, Uddiyana Bandha. Exhale all the way back. Inhale, coming forwards. So just hovering those knees, drawing the shoulder blades back and down. Exhale all the way back down. Last one, moving forward, this time bringing the knees all the way down to the floor and stepping that right leg forward for our runner's lunge on the other side. So remember you've got options, floor, thigh, arms release. And just as we did on the other side, inhale and release, exhale and contract. Inhale, release. Exhale, contract. One more time. Inhale. And exhale. And take the hands down to the ground. Walk that front foot across or tuck it into the groin. Stretch that back leg out. Inhale. As you exhale, you might come down to the floor. Release down however feels good for you. And then we practice our contractions here once more. Inhale, releasing. Exhale, contracting. So you can make it as hard or as easy as you like. If you lengthen the breath, you're going to lengthen the contraction as well. And whilst we're moving through these poses and they're sort of providing optimum opportunity to contract and release because of all the opening, you don't have to be in these poses to practice. So you could do it standing in line, brushing your teeth. If you set up a daily cue to remind you, so something you do every day, it might be waiting for the kettle to boil, that you stand in the kitchen and just bring awareness to this area. First, practicing the inhale and exhale, contracting and, rele and releasing, and then perhaps practicing holding for three breaths, releasing for three breaths. Then inhale, bring the hands back down to the floor, tuck those back toes and move all the way back through down dog once more. So noticing in this position, as you inhale and lift up, it's almost easier because of the gravity that we're upside down. The core is already lifted in and up because of this position through that part of the body. So just stay here, inhaling and exhaling for a couple of contractions. And then as you inhale, look towards the hand, step that left foot forward once more. So this time we're lifting through the chest, engaging the core, engaging the pelvic floor, making it nice and gentle, coming up through the thigh, lifting the chest. And then inhale, rise the arm. So high lunge, whole lot more opening happening in this area. Let's make it a little bit gentler by dropping that back heel down and squaring the hips off. So you could take your stance a little bit um, shorter if you needed. Otherwise, keep it nice and low. So depending on how good you're feeling through the pelvic floor as to how good this will actually feel. So drop the shoulders down. You can always completely release the hands if you just want to focus on the lower body. So again, in this position, inhale, release. Exhale, contract and lift. Inhale, release. Exhale, contract and lift. So let's inhale the arms up, release. Exhale, contract and lift and open out through warrior two. 
So adjust that back foot slightly, gaze out over the front hand. Stack the shoulders on top of the hips. If you want a little bit more challenge, you'll exhale down into those legs, creating even more opening. And this time we're gonna hold the contraction for a few breaths. So inhale, contract, exhale and hold. Just taking a few breaths here, feeling like all the muscles are lifting up. The core is lifting up, up through the ribs, shoulders drawing back and down. One more breath here. And then inhale, bring the hands together. Turn the toes out and take a seat down into your goddess squat. I often bring women here in my prenatal classes because this pose lends itself to contracting the pelvic floor. So as everything is open and lends itself to being released, we're gonna breathe through the contraction. So inhale and exhale. Lifting up, lifting up through that core, lifting shoulders back and down. If your legs are getting tired, you can bring the hands onto the thighs. So breathe and contract. And then inhale, press into those feet. Turn all ten toes to the front of the room. Inhale, hands through heart. Exhale, fold. Release the hands down underneath the chest. Inhale, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, release. Just giving those legs a beautiful stretch here. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, release. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, release. Then activating the muscles of the thighs. So really pressing the floor away, contracting the legs. Bring the hands back up onto the hips, lift through pelvic floor, lift the core, inhale, rise to stand. Turning the toes, finding warrior two on the opposite side. So just as we did here before, breathing through a few rounds and contracting. So inhaling, exhaling, inhale, and exhale. And then as you inhale, rotate that back hand, lift the back foot up and adjust the legs slightly. So they can be on train tracks rather than a tight rope. You may find yourself a little bit wobbly if the legs are too much in line. So you can release the hands to the hips if you really wanna focus on that lower body. And this time, inhaling and releasing, exhaling and contracting. Inhale, release, exhale, contract. Inhale, and exhale. And then just as we came up, lift that back heel, use the thigh, creeping all the way back down. Pressing those hands into the floor, activating through pelvic floor and core to lift that front foot and step all the way back to down dog. To release the head down, maybe bend into those knees, lift the tailbone and then exhale the heels towards the floor and just stay here and breathe. So from your down dog, once more, look towards the hands, bend into the knees, and this time step the right leg forward. Don't take it quite as far as we did before, so you want your stance a little bit shorter this time. If it's comfortable to do so, you can drop that back um, heel down. Keep the bend in the front knee. Inhale, lift through the chest. And then exhale, take the chest towards the thigh. So for you, you may need to actually stay quite long if this hamstring is really quite tight. If you have a block, you could also work with the hands on that. So high side or short side, whatever you need. If you do have a lot of movement in these hamstrings, a lot of flexibility, you could inhale, straighten it up, and then exhale, take the nose towards it. 
So in this position, we still have a fair bit of opening, but there's not a lot of muscle um, strengthening going on like there is in our squats and our warriors. So here, it's a lot more of a gentle contraction. You're probably not feeling as much pressure in that area. So it's almost harder to think about those muscles. So as you inhale, release. And as you exhale, contract. Inhale, release. Exhale, contract. And just as we did before, bend into that front knee, use the thigh, come all the way up. So keep it nice and gentle. Turn towards the front once more, take the toes out wide and squat down. So you notice once again, a lot of pressure in this area and you've got to really contract those muscles to keep that control there. So notice how it's different in different poses and what we're doing with our legs. Usually the inner thigh is involved when the core is engaged, it's a lot stronger. So if you are finding you've got a weak pelvic floor, you'll probably notice that the back is out, the hips may feel a little bit uncomfortable, your core is probably a little bit weak as well. So all things that as mothers we probably face at some stage. So bringing awareness to the pelvic floor can actually not just impact little accidents, but can also help the back, help the hips, and it really affects our whole body and how it's feeling. So inhale, press into those legs. We'll turn the toes once more and come down, stretching out through the legs. So just keep the hands under the hips. Inhale, lengthen the back. Exhale, release the head down. Inhale, so keep the pelvic floor relaxed on the inhale and contract on the exhale once more. Inhale, release, exhale, contract. Inhale, coming back up. So using the muscles of the legs, contract pelvic floor, contract core, rise all the way up. Turn the toes once more, inhale, come down. And this time coming over to one side. So drawing those toes back towards you. So noticing the stretch in the hamstring quite strongly. And just contracting here. Exhale, breathing through it. Inhale. And exhale, moving to the opposite side. So keep the pelvic floor lifting up. Keep the core activated as you move over. And then release here for a moment and then contract once more and take a few breaths. And then inhale, coming all the way back up, walking the hands over to the opposite side, turning that front foot, maybe shortening your stance if you need. And just as we did before, inhale, lift the spine long. Exhale, take the chest towards the thigh, maybe grabbing the block, maybe just keeping the fingertips touching on the floor. So feeling that stretch through the front hamstring. So working on contracting and releasing here. Finding we have to really think about those muscles Inhale, bend back into that front leg, rise back up, turn all the way back, lengthways on the mat, hands into heart. We're going to walk the feet in slightly and then exhale, squat back down. See if you can come all the way down to the floor, keeping the pelvic floor engaged. Exhale, standing back up. Inhale, lowering down, so keeping the contraction of the pelvic floor and the core. Exhale, press the floor away. Once more. Inhale, lowering down. Exhale, standing up. And this time, I lied. Coming back down one more time. And staying here, so settling in. If this isn't comfortable for you, take a block. Maybe flat side will be safer. <laughs> 
Take a block underneath the bottom and take a seat down. So press the elbows into the inside of the knees. Lift the chest long so the spine is lifted. So, so much opening in this area now, especially if you're sitting on the block, you may feel like you can relax. So do that, relax the muscles. And then we're gonna take three breaths, contracting pelvic floor in and up, core in and up, lengthening the spine. When we really focus on bringing everything into alignment, the whole body works better. So when we focus on the pelvic floor and the core, we can then lift fully through the spine, which then means our shoulders work in the optimum position instead of being hunched over. We can breathe more fully into that chest because we're opening out through the lungs. It's really interesting once you get into it how small changes to small areas actually impact the whole body. All right, so to finish off today, we're gonna to end up with our legs up the wall and then do a wide leg variation. So if you wanna come off the block now, the easiest way to get up the wall is to actually take one hip right up against the wall. So it's almost like you're taking one butt cheek right up onto the wall and then use the body to swing the legs round and you shouldn't have to do too much adjusting to make it so that the back of the legs are completely against the wall. So here, these muscles are gonna just naturally release. So again, if we can inhale and bring our awareness to them and then exhale and contract, lifting in and up. So working with a few breaths here, that rotation again of inhaling and releasing, exhaling and contracting. And then you might like to change it so that you're inhaling and exhaling through a couple of contractions and holding and then completely releasing. So the wide leg variation that you might feel comfortable trying is to take the legs as wide as you can on the wall. Sorry about that plant. <laughs> so letting the legs release right out. So now that there's a whole lot of stretching in this area, We'll take a couple of breaths, lifting the pelvic floor up, lifting the core in. So it's almost like you're drawing the back or the lower back into the floor as the core contracts. Draw the shoulder blades into the earth so the spine is long. So just staying here for a few minutes. Whenever you need, you can release the legs back up to straight or take the feet to the floor and draw the knees into the chest. If it's feeling good, you can relax the legs a little bit more, still contracting the pelvic floor, but releasing the muscles around the legs. And then when you're ready, use the hands, bend into the knees, draw the knees back into the chest, hug them in. And then slowly roll to the side, coming back up to have a seat. So bring yourself up into a comfortable seat. You may like to sit up on the block. I like to always make my hips higher than my knees. It just feels more comfortable. It means I can sit up straight without doing too much effort. So I hope that this class today really helped you bring awareness to the pelvic floor, gave you a new understanding of how those muscles need to lift up and contract in conjunction with the core to really provide a solid base for the rest of our poses. You'll find as you practice this regularly and bring that same awareness to other yoga classes. So just because it's not a pelvic floor class doesn't mean that you're not lifting and contracting those muscles during other classes as well. So if you bring that same awareness to your other classes, you'll find those muscles getting stronger and stronger by the day. I know we're all told to practice our Kegels or our pelvic floor exercises regularly, but hands up, <laughs> who forgets them quite regularly? I do. But if I'm practicing my yoga and I'm bringing awareness to the whole body, I naturally now 
bring awareness to that area because I've trained myself that my alignment is about pressing the floor away, drawing up on the legs, pelvic floor, core, shoulders, back and down, head lifts. So once you start getting that body awareness, you'll find that in your daily life as well. Whenever you um, come into these positions that really need that support, you'll naturally start to contract. And that's the best thing when suddenly it becomes natural. So I hope that today has helped you find that awareness, has helped give you some ideas to really strengthen the pelvic floor area, and I hope that it helps you feel better in your own body. Thanks for joining me. Namaste.